This episode is brought to you by the Wedding Planning Blueprint course, the new way to plan your wedding. I've been a professional wedding planner for almost 20 years now, and though nothing can beat the excitement of a wedding day, my favorite moments are sharing the real wedding planning experiences and tips that no one else is talking about. I designed this course to help take you from feeling lost and overwhelmed to educated and in control of your wedding plans. The course includes 24 lessons that are structured to help you first create your wedding planning foundation and then build upon it in an intentional way so that you don't make one of the most common and expensive mistakes, planning your wedding backwards. The newest feature in the course, Wedding Chat GPT, allows you to ask your wedding planning questions and get professional answers 24-7. The answers are pulled from the course content, which makes the responses reliable and actionable. This will be a true game changer, saving you time and money while you plan your big day. To see a full list of what's included in the course, head to planningcollective.com forward slash WPB course. Working with a wedding planner would literally cost you thousands, but now you can have the expert advice and tips for under $150. And while the course is a steal, I do recognize that that's still an investment. Make sure you grab our free download, Expensive Wedding Planning Mistakes, and I can promise that that alone will save you the cost of the course. You can find our free guides at planningcollective.com, and I look forward to helping you plan your wedding. Kate McClellan, pro wedding planner with over 16 years of experience helping more than 400 couples down the aisle. I started Planning Collective to help all couples get through the overwhelm of wedding planning by sharing my actionable tips and tools that I've used over the years working with my clients. We'll focus on getting rid of what I like to call FOWO, the fear of wedding oversight. This is an unfortunate condition that almost every couple will suffer from at some point. Let's get you back to enjoying the planning process. Here we go. Hey guys, Kate here. Welcome back to another episode of the Wedding Planning Collective podcast. I'm super excited for today's episode because I get to talk about one of my favorite things, Fat Max, and I can't wait to share with you the unexpected use for one of our most commonly used items. For those of you who haven't had the opportunity to meet Fat Max, he's the Stanley Toolkit that we use as an emergency kit on wedding days. He's about the size of a big suitcase with lots of compartments and space for all of our smaller containers. I'll definitely share some images on our Instagram, so make sure to follow us at Planning Collectively so you can get the true visual. Today, I wanna talk about what items we always have on us in Fat Max, as well as what you'll wanna make sure you have on your wedding day, just in case. I'll talk through the certain categories and items, but you can download the full list for free over at planningcollective.com forward slash emergency kit, and you can find the link in the show notes here. At the beginning of every wedding season, I restock Fat Max with about $500 in items that we've needed in the past, or I know it's only a matter of time before we're going to need it at an upcoming wedding. Now, before you freak out thinking that you need to create your own $500 emergency kit, I promise you that this is overkill for a regular setup. I'm going to share with you the most used items that we have and the things that I highly recommend that you have in your kit in just a bit. The list you can find over on planningcollective.com is also broken down by what you might need versus what we have, so you can create your own realistic wedding day emergency kit. So within Fat Max, we have different containers to separate things into different categories. The container categories we have are a first aid kit, hair and nails, health and beauty, adhesives, meaning glue, tape, etc., and an other category. In each of these categories, there are a few items that I would recommend everyone has on them and others that fall into that overkill category. For example, I think every couple needs to have some kind of pain reliever, just in case, but unless you're having an outdoor wedding, you can definitely skip the sunblock and bug spray. Having the items in these separate containers makes it super easy for us to grab just the first aid kit or the hair and nails if we know exactly what we need from it. If you're gonna have a lot of DIY items, or if you're at a venue where you're responsible for a lot of the setup, like a backyard wedding, a tented space, or another unique venue that we've discussed in episodes nine and 11, you'll wanna have more supplies on hand in case something goes wrong. 
In episode 62, I discuss going through a visualization exercise before your wedding, and I want you to do the same thing with your decor items so you can anticipate those extra items you might want to pack up with you for the day or weekend. For example, if you're bringing flameless candles for decor, make sure you have some extra batteries and even an extra candle or two in case you get one that doesn't work. Another example would be DIY arches, which are super popular and convenient right now, but make sure you have a set of tools with you. We've definitely needed hammers and screwdrivers for these, even when the kit says that they're supposed to be tool free. Other things you may wanna consider having on hand if you'll be doing a lot of the setup would be a hot glue gun, zip ties, packing tape and other various forms of tape like duct tape, double-sided tape, floral wire, command hooks, and other items that might be associated with your decor, like extra vases, fabric, and so on. The last part of our emergency kit that I wanna point out is that there are several items that we always have on us, but check with your venue before you spend money on adding them to your list. These items include a knife and server for your cake cutting, umbrellas, wine and bottle openers, table numbers and stands, a portable steamer, and lighters, the long kind to light candles. Most weddings that are at traditional venues, we're not gonna need to use these items, but every once in a while they come in handy for us to have, especially if we are in one of those unique spaces. While I do love Fat Max, he's not the most convenient to lug around everywhere we go on a wedding day. I always have a small crossbody bag on me at all times, so I can have certain things right there with me. Let's get into the most commonly used items we need and what I recommend you have in your emergency kit or bag. The three things I will always have in my side bag are safety pins, bobby pins, and scissors. And I gotta be honest, I do love that moment when a bridesmaid or the mother of the bride asks if I have a safety pin or scissors, and within a second, I've got it in my hand for them. Love it. So you're definitely gonna wanna have these items on hand in a variety of sizes for both the safety and bobby pins, as well as different colors for the bobby pins for whoever may need them. In addition to those three, I always recommend that you have these items with you on your wedding day. Band-Aids, also in a variety of sizes, aspirin or some form of pain reliever, hairspray, tape, both regular and double-sided, super glue, because you never know, stain removers, white chalk, which we can use sometimes to cover any stains on white dresses, a lint roller, a mini sewing kit, and make sure it has thread that matches whatever the wedding party is gonna be wearing, and bottles of water and snacks like granola bars, nuts, and mints. And the final category of items you'll wanna make sure to have packed up for your wedding would be your personal items. While you'll likely have to pack up an overnight bag with you with your regular toiletry items, you'll also wanna make sure to have a smaller bag ready with the personal things that you may wanna keep with you throughout the day. This would include any medications, especially if you have a sensitivity to certain painkillers, allergy meds, or if you take prescriptions, make sure to have what you need in your personal kit. Makeup in your shades for touch-ups, primarily foundation or a powder and a lipstick or gloss, deodorant, toothpaste, and some Tums. Before we wrap up, I promise to tell you what a surprising use for one of the most common items we use is, and that is safety pins. And I will say probably 50% of our weddings, we are using safety pins to help save a dress bustle. So the bustles usually look beautiful until the dance floor starts going, and then it is inevitable that guests are gonna get a little bit too close, or maybe somebody steps on the train, or pops the bustle a little bit, and that's when those safety pins will come in handy. Once the pictures are done, you're not really gonna care if it's perfectly bustled. So make sure that you have some larger safety pins on hand in case you do need to use them to fix your bustle. And again, don't stress out if that does happen because it is super common. It just means that you're having an amazing time at your wedding. I hope this was useful for you as you put your emergency kit together for your wedding day. Make sure to grab the full list. You can download it again for free over at planningcollective.com forward slash emergency kit. And if you found this podcast episode helpful, please take a quick second to rate and review on the platform you listen on. It would mean the world to me and it will help other couples find the wedding planning tips they need. 
Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.